Hello and welcome back to Adventurous Way. I'm Matt and behind the camera is Diana. Today we are here in Colorado and we're going to be visiting Dinosaur National Monument. But today we're going to be doing something a little special. We're not going to be driving into the park like we normally would. Instead, we're going to be whitewater rafting down the Green River. We're now here technically in Utah and we are at the Adrift uh, dinosaur rafting center. Uh, we've got all our kit on, we've got our helmets, our PFDs, and we are about to jump in the van and hit the road. We're going to drive about an hour up the road, um, go and I think see some petroglyphs, which will be pretty mm -hmm. cool. And, uh, and after that, we'll be getting in the water and, uh, and taking a ride through Dinosaur National Monument. And this will be class three rapids and nine miles of uh, river. Right, nine miles. Awesome. I think that's us. Let's go back three. So we are back in the car and this time we are heading back again to Dinosaur National Monument. Yesterday was the rafting and that turned out to be super super good fun actually. And about 9 o'clock we headed out into the, uh, the National Monument. We did stop along the way, the guide actually took us on a very short hike, just 20 minutes or so, uh, up to see some petroglyphs and was able to give us some good history about the Fremont people that lived in the area. Not the typical rafting experience, hiking up a, a dirt trail in the desert. Um, but that was a, a nice little addition to the day. Then we, we made it down to the river, we went through our safety talk, and uh, we jumped into our boat. And there were two of us, uh, two, two, two boats, and we rafted down the river for the next few hours. The river was, was low uh, this time of year. It is mid-August. This is just about as low as the Green River gets. It is a dammed river. So we were at about 2,000, 2,500 cubic feet per second. They said in spring, when the season first starts, they can get up to 20 to 25,000 cubic feet per second. So we were not, we didn't get like a, a hardcore rafting experience yesterday, but it was really good fun to kind of raft through and to see what that area looked like from the river, uh, rather than being up on the trails or up in the mountains. Yeah, because really you, good. You're, the river has cut through the split mountain. That's where the name of Foot Mountain comes. And so you've you got the same mountain is on both sides of you, essentially. Yeah, so it feels like you're rafting through a canyon. It's like steep canyon walls on both sides. Uh, so that was very unique for a rafting experience. Yeah, and then after a couple of hours of rafting down, uh, we stopped on a little uh, sandbank, a little beach, and, uh, and the guides prepared lunch for us. We had a split mountain burrito. Yeah. The tour guides, as ever, uh, on these things were, were just a good laugh. They knew what they were doing. We felt really safe. Um, they gave us some good information about the wildlife and the geology and the history of the area. Yeah. And they also cooked a mean lunch. So that was good too. We saw a bald eagle. We saw yeah. um, big horn sheep hanging out by the river. Yeah, a few of them actually. Yeah. A red tailed hawk we saw. Uh, so yeah, just a, a really like different perspective, I think, on, on what a lot of people would typically see. And then after lunch, we squeezed through a little uh, crack in the rock called the squeeze. Entirely optional, didn't have to do it. <laughs> this is quite fun. How are you doing? I'm good. <laughs> you have now. I'd offer to help, but I'm not in the best <laughs> I would, but I'm filming. That's more important. <laughs> it wasn't on camera, it didn't happen. <laughs> Can you? I've never seen anybody do it like this before. You're the first. <laughs> you got it. Stable? Yeah. Yeah. Most people, not, nobody does this gracefully, but most people kind of, you put your, end up putting your left hand around where your left foot is and kind of lowering yourself. Oh, I see. Slowly. That seems <laughs> better. <laughs> That's something you do every day. It's not my most graceful move. <laughs> you look good. That's the best I've ever seen. <laughs> Made it. Awesome. 
afterwards we got back in the boats and we headed back downstream again and it was probably maybe another hour or so uh, before we got to the bottom and again just just enjoying the scenery it was not a race by any means it was just a nice kind of leisurely uh, float down the river uh, so yeah really really recommend that experience so much so in fact that they were telling us about the multi-day trips they do so you can go for a three four five day uh, trip down the river and i think that's quite unusual usually um rafting companies offer one day trips that's like their main thing and then maybe they offer multi-day trips versus here actually doing multi-day multi-day trips down the uh yampa river especially is yeah. very popular way more popular than the day trips yeah and uh and so yeah i think if we're back in the area again that would be really something that, that we would consider doing. It would be a great way to, to see far more of this area. And it's beautiful around here, it really is. Uh, so yeah, we got to the bottom um, and we got the boats out and it's just a short kind of 10 minute ride uh, back to the, the rafting center from there. Uh, a really unique experience. Uh, I don't think when we were first looking at Dinosaur Ma uh, National Monument and you're looking at what is essentially a, a fossil site within the desert here, I guess, or near desert. I don't think rafting was the thing I thought we were going to be doing. Um, but in reality, it turned out to be a really fun way to explore the area. So that was yesterday. Today, uh, we are heading back in to do, I guess, the more conventional itinerary of Dinosaur National Monument. We are going to head to the visitor center, get our passport stamped, uh, get the sticker, uh, check some things out in there, some of the displays and things. And then we're going to head up to the quarry. Uh, now at this time of year, you have to take a little shuttle up. Um, and it's, it's only, I think about half a mile away from the visitor center, but they, uh, they get people on a shuttle and, and take people up that way. We actually visited Dinosaur National Monument um, in December, 2017. And that is like the lowest part of the low season for them there. And when we got there middle of the week, uh, late December, we were the only car in the parking lot we were the only visitors in the uh, in the visitor center, and they said that their visitation in a week like that would be a dozen people or so. Very, very low season. So uh, we got there, and uh, and we actually at that time you you can drive up to the quarry uh, rather than taking the shuttle. But we drove up with one of the rangers last time, who uh, who opened it up for us because it was all locked because there was no one there. And uh, and last time we had a little uh, private tour with the ranger at the quarry. So I don't think we'll get that this time, uh, but we're still really looking forward to, uh, to exploring. And uh, what's special about this place is that usually uh, dinosaur quarries, all the dinosaur fossils get uh, extracted and taken out and put in the museums. But here you can actually see half extracted dinosaur fossils right there in the quarry. We've taken the shuttle bus and we are now standing outside the quarry. This is the main exhibit here in Dinosaur National Monument with the fossils on the wall. We know what's inside, but let's take you in and show you what's there. Behind me, you can see the main bone wall here in the quarry. This is the main layer where all the fossils are found with dinosaurs. And it's incredible. I have never seen so many fossils just in one layer, in one place at once. It's absolutely stunning. The bone wall here was originally excavated between 1909 and 1924, but what you can see behind me is just a tiny fraction of the original size of the bone wall. And in fact, many of these fossils and many of these full dinosaurs have been taken to museums and universities around the country where you can see them today. fossils, it's very important to first know the geology. Dinosaur National Monument has some very interesting geology. And here at this park, we have a whole lot of sedimentary rock. Now, when you think about sedimentary rock, you think about the word sediments, right? 
These sedimentary rock is just little pieces of other rock that have eroded off of other big rocks and are carried and deposited into a new landscape uh, by wind or, or, or water, things like this. And um, they get laid down, these sediments get laid down in layers over time, right? So how do you tell which one's the more recent layers and which one's the oldest ones, right? That's the question. Now, what's occurred here, right? You know, in, in, in the case of Dinosaur National Monument, right? Our layers actually were laid down just like any other layers, like the layers at the Grand Canyon, where you see that they're all very horizontal. So say, for example, that this is the time of the dinosaurs here, right? You have a flat floodplain, right, where the dinosaurs are living. And then as the time, as, as time changes and the, the continents are splitting apart and the climate is changing, the environment is also changing too. And over time, you have a different record of all these different sediments that have been laid down by the different environments that they were formed from, right? But at the end of the Cretaceous period, about 66 million years ago, um, something kind of interesting in this area happened, right? Uh, further east of us is the Rocky Mountains. The rising of the Rocky Mountains was such a tremendous geologic force that it actually wrinkled this area. And so all of our layers here, got wrinkled too and it ended up for and ended up forming something like a rainbow, right? But what happened since then, right, is that the top layers of this rainbow got eroded away. And so what you guys are seeing right behind me here is the side of that rainbow. These happen to be um, saltwater clams. Uh, so this was a this was a saltwater area. stops on the auto tour here. The shelter behind me was inhabited by people up to 7,000 years ago based on stone tools that were found in the area. The petroglyphs and pictograms here are not that old but they're still about a thousand years old. Here you can see some more petroglyphs. These were also made by the Fremont people and we don't know a lot about these people. We do know that they lived in this area for around about 600 years but by the year 1200 all signs of them seem to have disappeared and the trail goes quiet. But the petroglyphs here are really interesting. We learned a lot yesterday on the rafting about how to interpret some of these. I particularly enjoyed the one that shows the uh, Crab Nebula supernova. That was something that happened for a couple of years during that period and would have been visible in the sky. And it's amazing to think that people here not only saw that, but recorded what they saw, along with people from cultures around the world. That's a really useful way to date some of these petroglyphs. There are two different types of artwork at Dinosaur National Monument. There are petroglyphs and there are pictographs. Now, petroglyphs are formed by chipping into the stone, and the artist would have found areas that are covered in a dark mineral deposit that's known as desert varnish. You may remember we saw some of that over at Colorado National Monument. On the other hand, pictographs are actually painted onto the stonework using dyes that they would have created and paints that they would have created from the natural resources around them. We've been following the auto tour along the road here, and it has numbered sections such as this one here with lots of information in about what's what you're gonna find along the way. You pick these up actually on the road itself, just after you come in through the entrance station, there's a little box on the side of the road and you can pop a dollar in the box and you can pick up one of these guides. I would highly, highly recommend it. It's a really worthwhile guide to have. It tells you lots of the history and also the geology of the area as you drive through this magnificent scenery. Now the cabin that you see here belonged to Josephine Bassett Morris better known as Josie Morris, an absolute local legend in the area. She lived here for over 50 years, on her own most of the time, in this cabin, and this was her farmstead. This is where she lived, she grew her crops, she kept her animals. Josie Morris was a really devious woman. It's amazing to learn about the story of her. One example that I really enjoy is around the water rights to one of the creeks that ran through the land here. Now she didn't own the rights to the creek that went through because that creek went to some other lands and that rancher owned the rights. However, she found a loophole. He only owned the rights to the water that went above the ground and made it all the way there. So she created a series of ponds and lakes to stop the water here, to let it sit, uh, filter into the ground and therefore the water was hers. A rancher until the very end, Josie lived here until she was 89 and in 1964, unfortunately a broken hip force her to leave the area. But she lived a 19th century lifestyle all the way through that part of the 20th century, which is incredible. No electricity, no mains water, her light was just an oil lamp, a real, real pioneer.
The last thing that we've done here at Dinosaur National Monument is take a drive up Harper's Corner Road to the Echo Park Overlook. And the views here are absolutely stunning. Seeing out over all these rock formations below and the river is absolutely beautiful. Really, really well worth seeing. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video about our time here at Dinosaur National Monument as much as we have filming it. It's been really good fun and I think it's one of those places where there's a lot more that goes on here than you would know just from the name. Dinosaur National Monument was our 34th stop on our quest to visit all 419 national park units across the US. If you enjoyed this video, then hit that subscribe button and join us on our journey to visit them all.